folks, DC7 here. Welcome back to my channel, and as we can tell from my colorful friend, we are in fact on Farming Simulator 2013. Yes, thank you for piping in right then. So, and we are here on Smithfield Farm. Now, we've looked at Smithfield Farm before, and yes, this is another map review of a map that we've already done. But, what the sign fails to tell us is, this is the new and improved Smithfield Farm. Not only has there been some sheds added, some fields changed around, and such details as that, the forestry has also been added. Um, doesn't have soil mod, but it does have kelp mod, water mod, uh, what else we got? Manure mod. Uh, you require map door trigger, very important, otherwise you will very quickly find yourself hooped. So, this map was in the uh, FSUK's Map Mania contest and did get to be the most popular map. And for good reason, when I did the Map Mania reviews, this was certainly one of the more desired maps. Uh, interesting system for feeding your... Uh, your sheep, you actually have to use a loader, so... But, just one of the features. One of the things that's quite unique on this map is... If we go to our map map, there we go, you'll notice darn near the whole thing is bright green. And if we go to crops, you'll see, well, by guppies, nothing changed. Indeed, Every field, other than 22, 16, 17, 5, and 7, are covered in grass. The uh, field 7 is actually the only field you have that you can go directly to and plant a crop in. All of these other three fields you own, you would have to actually plow yourself an area to plant crops. Now, that might seem a bit strange, but you know what? I've always kind of wanted a map like that. And the reason I've always kind of wanted a map like that is because it gives you exactly that freedom. You can simply come into a field and go, well, you know what? I think I want a field this big, or this shape, or this crop with this crop over here. And I don't have to use a separate field. Now, all gates have map door trigger. As you can see, they're not terribly, terribly wide. I believe they are 10-foot gates. And uh, here's a typical field. And as I say, they are completely covered in grass. You know, now we'll look at the price. We have almost 4 hectares for 168,000. So yeah, that's a huge field. But again, being all grass fields, you could mow the small section you'd need and then plow a piece in. You know, if this part of the field's too hilly for you, well, we use that section over there to actually plant crops in and we can cut some grass down there. And, oh, there's another spot, the far corner, that's good for a field. I like those things. I think that's a neat feature. Now, a lot of the collisions are off, a lot of them are not. Um, for the most part, the hedges on the side of the road, the collisions are off. Which is a nice thing, because there are some pretty tight roads. The other thing you're going to find is, you're not really going to want huge, huge gear. Now, this is our one workable field. And as you can see, it's not exactly a flat, rectangular chunk of dirt either. So, I did, uh... And it's a pretty good size, considering you are limited to what you can fit through these gates. Now, um, one of the things that is an advantage, and here's one of the other fields, it's actually, if you purchase it, you don't have to plow it. But again, there's an advantage of having these grass fields, is the fact that if I decide I want to stay with gear, that's going to easily allow me to pass through these gates and drive these narrow um, roads and entrances, etc. I can do that by simply limiting how big I make my fields. Ooh, a good size little shedley, right? So if I want to stay with smaller gear, well, I just won't make it ginormous fields. And it works out well. 
So, there is, and I really kind of find it surprising, um, because there is so much grass on this map. I mean, ideally, you'd want to silage it and sell it. That would make you the money to actually get on with uh, getting some of the fields together. But there is no bio plant, no biogas plant on this map. So, here's where we uh, feeds them. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, there's absolutely no biogas plant on this entire map. So, you can't go and just sell tons of silage and become a rich, rich little boy and buy everything on the map. Here's our silo system. A central dumping point with separate triggers for each crop. Kinda cool. There's also separate potato storage and separate beet storage. There's our tatoes there as an example. So, all in all, pretty decent map along those lines. Um, you can see, again, with these narrow laneways, you wouldn't want to be, uh, you know, driving a great big titanium edition harvester or something through here, because even with the head off it, and even though the hedges are non-collidable, the trees are, you will slam into those like they were, well, trees. So... There is... Oh, let's go back to our map here. There we go. Up in the top, sort of right hand of the map, the big gray piece, there's... that is an area there that is right beside a large forest area, and there are three. You can see the darker areas on this map. Those are forested areas. There's three main ones, and then one other one here, where this one that I'm lighting up is. Um, but the little gray area right up at the top, that's there so that you can buy and place your bioheat, uh, sawmill, and wood chip. So, you need to earn yourself a couple hundred thousand dollars. I think what I'm going to do here is quickly dust in a little bit of coin and get a vehicle, shall we? Um... So yeah, you're going to have to uh, dig yourself up a couple hundred thousand dollars and actually buy the uh, placeables to get the forestry working. So, let's grab ourselves. <coughs> oh, excuse me. My apologies, guys. Let's grab a little Jeep here, shall we? All right. The shop is way down here. So we can light it up and then jump out. <laughs> Let's have a look. Here is your shed to get your uh, kelp. It should be behind the door. There you go. Nice big thing of lime. Perfect. And, uh, well, one be fertilizer, one would be lime, of course. What else have we got over here? Whoops, a pretty much deadly endly. And on this side, we have a bank, a vehicle purchase and sale point, your phone, and right next to it is another sale point. Are you guys actually just going to let me walk through here? No, you're not. <laughs> I'm trying to get over the fence without actually having to uh, go all the way around here. There we go. Another sale point here. <laughs> you can sell your straw here. Uh, straw and hay. So I suppose that is one way that you could actually get rid of grass. Um, as you can see, you can pick up your seed here. Canola, wheat, corn, etc, etc. And... If we go over here, we should get a trigger here somewhere. There we go. There's our grain storage. Or, well, or we dump for grain storage. So, that's the trigger point to sell at. And, uh, yeah, you probably definitely want to do that before you pulled your trailer in. <laughs> I'm just thinking, you know. Yeah. We have an egg sell point, the bank. 
And around back. This is where we can do our wolf. So there you go. There's our trigger point. Now, hopefully I can hop a new defense. And I can hop that one. And we can get back to our yeep. Which I have left somewhere. There you are. There we go. So. Oops. Uh. <laughs> oh, I know what it is. I've got my off-road tires on. There we go. Much better. So. I'm going to say the soil mod isn't on here, obviously. Uh, dee 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 dee. There we are. Nice map. Perfect. So, the chickens and the sheep are on the farm. The cows, however, and we do need to have a look at that because they do have a few differences. Um, down that way is another major cell point. I suppose we should go and have a look at it. You can see what I mean about uh, tight roads. You are probably really going to want to think about how you want to work the differences between big fields oh, and uh, tight laneways. And yeah, it's ways down here. So there we go. So you can see we've got the Mid Wales Brewers. So here you are. This is your another cell point and again you have the uh, green trigger so don't forget map door trigger when you do this map guys you gotta have it and i don't think it's included in the mod package so you gotta remember to throw it in and i gotta admit first time i went to record this i didn't remember <laughs> and realized well there's no point even going any further all right so, we've seen the shop area, we've seen the chicken sheep area. We will have a look at the cows, we will have a look at one of the forestry places. Um, at least the one where you can actually put your gear. And that should pretty much be that. I do find this to actually be a fairly intriguing little map, to be honest with you. Um, I think the fields, well, the ones that are here might be a little bit big for that uh, Ferguson pack that came out, the Ferguson system, but it is an intriguing little pack, and if you wanted to try it, this might be just the sort of map to do so. But, the other thing is, I don't think there's anything in that pack that does over about 10 mile an hour, so it'd take you, what, a week to get up there? I'm not really sure why, but it's a rather generous shed sitting right here. And by rather generous, I mean cavernous in generosity of size. So, but it's not really connected to too much. As you can see, it's just sort of out here. There's our farm way over there in a the corner. So. And, of course, across the street, there aren't really any turns to get into anything, so mm, kind of an odd place. But really nice shed. I mean, wow. It's huge. And really suits the landscaping. I like that. They didn't just drop some generic shed on there. Uh, we got to pull out here to let all the other traffic by. <laughs> and... If we head on just a little further, we will find this spot. And this spot is where you can, as I say, drop your sawmill, drop your bio plant, all of that stuff. Can all go here, wood chip storage, etc, 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 right? So, kind of cool. Um, it is nice to have a proper area, rather than just try and find a spot to drop things where 
you know, nine times out of ten, it seems all you really end up accomplishing is having a building with half the floor showing through the grass, or, you know, parts of it are absolutely inaccessible, or etc. We've all been there. We know what's going on. So there you go. That's where you actually set up your uh, area for your forestry. And as I say, there are, I believe, three spots on the map that are set aside, kind of specifically for that. But what we want to do now is go and have a look at one more important feature. You'll notice a lot of the fields have trees in the middle of them. Yeah, so I suppose if you really wanted to, you could plant trees just about anywhere and it would still look okay. So, which way do I want to go? If I go down through here, I think we'll actually get back to our farm. And then if we go out the opposite side, do 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 do, there we go, we're back on the main Smithfield farm. Perfect. And as I say, if we head out through the opposite way, we have here this big shed. There's our field. Oh no, that one doesn't belong to us. Field 2 does. Field 5 and field 13 here are fields that we can buy. I just don't see the little bouncy ball. Oh, okay, that's field 7, and we do own that. So, very cool. So that's one of our fields. Nice. If we continue just a little further, we will get to the cow farm. And... Uh, <laughs> the brakes on this Jeep are less than desirable. And there's an issue. I think the gates really should turn in to open. Alright, throw on the brake, turn off the engine, get out of the truck, and here's our cow farm, and I like this one. Now, you have to dung out the farm. Yes, you do. So, something I did kind of forget to do here, which I normally do, just so you can see where all these things actually end up. I like to have a few cows, a few sheep, and a few chickens loitering about the property. That way you get to sort of see where all of these things are going to be, right? So here, I suggest you actually... So let's open that one. So when you dung the place out, what you want to do is dump the manure here. And that's what this whole section here is. This is for your dry, your dry manure and then the slurry. You can go in here and take it out, of course. Your slurry gets pumped into here. And there's our outlet for it. And as we can see, the cows just pretty much sort of have the run of this part of the farm. So yeah, cool. We can blow some straw in here. You know, we've got the troughs, the water, is this their field? Nope. So, oh I see, okay, well that's very cool. So they can just simply, their part of the thing isn't fenced off. They can simply go directly from the shed out into their field. Well that makes sense. And, huh. I see a stump sitting here. I also see... this would appear to be one of the forest areas. So, kind of cool, right near our farm. Yeah, that's definitely what this is. This is one of the forest areas, so we can plant trees all up through here. Very neat. Very, very neat. And I don't think you can actually get to it. Okay, there's a sail point right down there. Which obviously you don't get to by driving through this field, but I'm not sure that we looked at this one, so this might be a good finishing off. And jump the fence, crash through the hedge. There we go. This is... oh no, this is the Brewers. Oh really, they're that close to us. Huh, we went around the other way the last time, they seemed so far away. 
Ha, huh, very cool. All right, well, now we know. So there's a sell point right there. Perfect. So there you go, guys. This is... I'm quite intrigued. This is a really cool little map. And like I said, if you wanted to do... You know, the kind of map where, yeah, you're actually out there cutting your own fields. Kind of like uh, Agricultural Simulator had the game ever actually bloody well worked. That's how it worked. You got to create your own fields. Well, this sort of a setup, I think you'd be far more inclined to do that sort of thing. I'm kind of intrigued. I'm totally honest with you. I am kind of intrigued. You know, and that would mean that, uh, you know, other than a couple of really big fields, well actually only one that you own this is the only big field you'd have to deal with everything else you could pretty much cut to your own size huh. I'm intrigued there you go guys this has been Smithfield Farm if you enjoyed the review leave a like if you had issues leave a dislike that's fine any comments would of course be appreciated and will be responded to as I do try and do um and that should cover it guys awesome little map it is available on fs uk i recommend if you're looking for something on the uh, this is based on a real place by the way if i forgot to throw that in so if you're looking for something that's uh, got a lot of class a lot of style really nice detailing and maybe the possibility to play things a little different because you can carve your own fields and in fact you're pretty much gonna have to well, this may just be the map for you. I really like it. And as a final note, I think you could do MR on this. You know, it would certainly add to the challenge, and I get a feeling this map might just be challenging as it is. So there you go, guys. This has been Species 7 for Farming Simulator 2013. I hope you enjoyed the show. Take care of each other, folks, and ciao for now.